And we wouldn't expect news from Will Anderson in the offseason uh, because he's a perfect Eagle Scout of a human being. Uh, but he also uh, he also looms large in our minds as we consider what Daniil Hunter and him paired up are going to look like. I think that uh, I, I saw these highlights on the Houston Texans YouTube, and I started looking through them. I'm like, man, it reminded me of just how good Will Anderson is at the complete game of football, which for sometimes rookie pass rushers, it takes them a while to really latch on to and embrace being run defenders. And it did not take Will long at all. Half these highlights are are run highlights. But we'll start off. And I meant to do – I was going to do uh, like a Chalk Talk thing, but I cannot get this app to work. This is going to be in my inaugural use of it, but I'll just use my little pointer instead. Will Anderson up at the top here, left defensive end. The first game of the season versus the Ravens. Morgan Moses, very good right tackle going up against him. And what you see here is really – Morgan Moses wasn't quite ready, I think, in this game for just how quick Will Anderson gets across the line of scrimmage because he gets put in a position here where all of a sudden he has to, he has to hold. He has to hold pretty ferociously. And it ended up working out really well for Anderson, actually, because one of the things that... So he got out, off the line of scrimmage very quickly and doesn't doesn't even really hit a move other than gets good hand position and is able to forklift this arm off of him and then and then Moses basically does Will Anderson's job for him and like Will gets perfect lean because Morgan Moses is is holding him he gets flagged for a hold and then he has to face the shame of the holding call flag being picked up cuz it's a a tackle tackle for a loss for a sack yeah That was a good year. Uh, that was a look. That was a very auspicious beginning for Will Anderson. It was. Uh, it would take a little while for him to get his next sack. Okay, this one. It, it, this is going to be Will Anderson blocking this kick, and Will is right here. So I want you to watch Malik Collins. Cause Malik Collins, R.I.P. Uh, deserves credit for clearing this this tackle. But you do as much of a hold as you can get away with. You got to make it look like you're actually rushing this gap. But you can kind of grab onto the back of the dude and pull him forward as, as you clear the way for, for, for Will Anderson. There he is right there. And you see Malik. Malik, see, you make it look like, I think it was Malik, wasn't it? Make it look like you're really trying to rush your hat, your butt off, but in reality, you're holding this, this offensive lineman. Oh, it was Malik down here. Oh, is that Shell? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yep. All right, Pittsburgh Stillers. J.J. Watt would be inducted into the Ring of Honor in this game. Uh, you got your Will Anderson right there. All right, so here immediately, uh, like sometimes the Texans, people try to describe D'Amico Ryan's defenses. The defensive ends just don't care about the run at all. They're just playing the run on the way to the quarterback. Like this is a good example of Will Anderson. Like he very much recognizes run here gets his hands into the offensive tackle, squeezes. I was actually surprised this made the highlights for Will Anderson because this was more about the other guys. I mean, they got a um, they got some kind of a blitz going on here. Yeah. Toa Toa. See, watch him squeeze down here, Will Anderson. Actually, okay. That's, that's not the best example. He should have been more patient there. He actually he actually bailed out a little early. So that's actually a good example of like Will Anderson uh, learning to be a little bit like by the end of the season, he knew that he had to squeeze that down. He actually abandoned his edge responsibilities when he cut in that quickly, but whatever, he was still active and got in on it. I'm not crushing him for that. Will Anderson right here. There's another example of like actually being cognizant of the run. Right here, okay. 
what you got to worry about here is whether Desmond Ritter is going to go off on a boot. I don't know if Will had a really good feel for reads here to know that this wasn't naked, but he takes off just not worried one bit about the about the bootleg. That uh, Jonathan Grenard. There's a Denzel Perryman there. Got a Steven Nelson. Much different defenses here. Will Anderson down here. Again, okay. Recognizes run. Takes this on. Presses. Sheds. It's good stuff. All right. Okay. <laughs> I don't listen. I don't know what the t- the Saints' offensive line or offense in general is trying to do here, but you're going to see this guard pull. You're going to see Trevor Penning fixated on Blake Cashman, and Will Anderson is just free to the backfield. Like Will Anderson, his triangle that he reads is he looks inside, sees that this guy's going down, so you're going to collapse. You see this guy's this guy is pulling, so. The play's either going to be here or there's some kind of some kind of a boot threat, but there's none of that. I don't know what I don't know what the Saints are supposed to do here, but I don't care. That's not my concern. Uh, you take advantage of the stupidity of the offense. Whether you're whether you're playing defensive line or selling investment products, you prey on the ignorance of others, and that's what you do. Boom, triple extension. Very stupid by the Saints there. Sorry, apologies to say that, that Saints. Uh, the, this year's Saints team will be different. I swear to you. Will Anderson up top, left defensive end. Again, like, geez, there, these are all run highlights. Like, that was beautiful. Just took the right tackle, got his hands inside, sheds, boom. That's right. So, like, what... What a lot of people, when they try to tell you that these defensive ends just get upfield and don't care about anything, if that were the case, then Will would be just rocketing back here, hitting his aiming point. Instead, he recognizes that 72 is coming right at him. That's a run read. And he also, like, his his leverage is out here. That's what he's genuinely responsible for. And even though his head is in here, he keeps that option open until the play turns back in. Like, that's... That's really good discipline by him. You force it back inside and you make the tackle. You have your cake and you eat it too. Will Anderson down here, left defensive end. Boom. Boom. (laughs) See? That's using the chip lock to your advantage. And Will talked about this, just the chip blocks, blocks frustrating him early in the season. This is as you're getting past the, the midpoint of the season. And Will started to, to learn a little bit about how to, how to massage these chip blocks. But watch this. I hope they, if they show it again. Yep, here we go. Okay, so Will Anderson down here. You get, oh, that's a violent chop. God bless you and your violent chop. That's a, this, is the, this is the thing that sometimes guys don't get or understand. It's like the the amount of violence you need here. Watch this chop without forecasting it. And then he's going to get this chip here, but watch what the chip does to him. Boop. It it creates, because you got this, you got this defensive tackle come up on field and it creates a perfect TE game where this defensive tackle is coming up and Will can just spin back around inside or not even spin, just come back inside. They were getting a lot better at that as the season went along. Uh, the the defensive tackles, RIP to both of them. But those those guys kind of replacing the responsibility of the defensive ends when the defensive ends came inside. Will Anderson here up at left defensive end. Again, like just understanding and reading his keys. He's unblocked, but he takes advantage of it. And like he doesn't, sometimes guys will take advantage of being unblocked, but where you see it, come back to roost as later in the game when they're not playing their responsibilities and the quarterback takes off on a bootleg. Will generally did a pretty good job. He got caught here and there, but he generally did a really good job of just like genuinely reading the play. So again, 
His first read is down inside. There's nothing coming back to him. So he's looking at the quarterback running back exchange and boom. And this is a this is a Cardinals team that would go on to like they would have some success in the run game as Kyler Murray got uh taken care of. Remember that they ran for like they ran for a boatload of yards versus Philadelphia towards the end of the season. And it was like five to ten yards at a clip, no explosive runs or anything. They just trucked people. Yeah, bad there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I see these offensive linemen. They, they, they sometimes they oh crap. Tell me you're joking, man. You're the only one saying that there's no. Uh, come on, Doyle. Is it really no audio? I just want to die if that's the case. Hey, that's on my thumbnail. Sorry if I get too many pauses here. Like it keeps the live stream from shutting down. Shut up. All right, there's audio. All right, thanks, guys. Um, back to Will Anderson here. And and uh, Doyle, I appreciate the heads up. I know it's... I, I appreciate the heads up because we had a disaster yesterday. Audio disaster. Lies, there's audio. I'm, now I'm just... Now I'm having a disaster trying to get the comments up. All right, here we go. Back to Will Anderson, left defensive end. All right. Oh, oh, <laughs> I honestly, he's a, he's a walking mental error creator because not for himself, but again, like, honestly, this comes out, he gets across the line so fast and it doesn't always look like, cause he's not his top end speed as a pass rusher is not the same as guys like Daniel Hunter, but he gets across the line and it screws up timing of things. To the point where uh, that guy's supposed to crack down on him, but Will gets across the line so quickly that he he disrupts the puller. The guy who's supposed to crack him should be able to take him completely out of the play, and this should be a clear path out here. But Will just he just wrecks everybody's day. Good job, Blake Cashman, too. Some good strength there, uh, there at the end. The old, the old tearaway jersey would have done him in on that. So I can't remember if I finished my sentence. Sorry if I'm a little herky jerky here. If I, if you, if you let it run continuously, sometimes they shut down the live stream for copyright reasons. So I need to chop it up a little bit. Will Anderson left end here. Boom. Ah. All right, so this is this is a part of the season where I got I started to get really excited after this Saints game. Or excuse me, after this Denver game. Cuz watch this, he didn't you're going to see like this the, the, it's triple extension. When you extend your your ankles, your knees and your hips all at once and just uncoil, Will had always done a really good job of showing a lot of triple exp ex extension and power and explosiveness inside but not as much on the edge this is the first time i really noticed him like watch the pop when he uncoils into 69 just boom and he still doesn't it's not like he destroys him or anything but he takes advantage of rocking him back there to lend to then win the battle with his hands and that's the that's the part right there like finishing right there is with something he didn't really have in college and he got better at it as the season went along that extra little bit of that's what keeps you from just getting QB pressures and turning into the sacks. It's just that that ability to shed and finish. Just that was nice, man. All right, Will Anderson, left defensive end. Again, you see, okay. I just want to. This I'm going to get nerdy D line here for a little bit, just because I, I I love guys that play the fundamentals well. So this is like something you go back to. The first time I learned this, my freshman year in college, from Coach De Stefano, the triangle that you read is just first cross the line. Your guy goes down. You're looking down 
to the exchange, see what else is coming back to you. Then you work your way back up to the quarterback and running back. And Will's also cognizant of what's out here if there's a crack or anything. But that that checking inside and then moving your eyes back here, he does it perfectly. Just checks inside, understands the boot is a threat, boom. Game wrecker. See, that's just good. He boy, he got better at this. See, like if if he weren't worried about the boot, and this is the this is just this is so obvious too. I'm like, he's getting good. He's reading the quarterback well. Uh <laughs> Russell's probably like 18 tells here, which he shouldn't have at this point. This is what Russell Wilson should be so freaking uh obsessive about details that it shouldn't be this easy to tell boot, and yet there it is. That, that right there, honestly, Russell Wilson taking that sack so easily there between the tell and then just not being as athletic as he used to be, that's that's what people are concerned about with Russell Wilson. It's a good gamble by the Steelers. It's just he's not the same guy he used to be. Up here again. Gets across the line fast, fast. Boom. Oh, yeah. Remember, this is um, so for one, obviously, Derek Singley, great jump on this ball. I feel like both of these guys got less credit than they deserved on this one because I think some people fixated on Derek Singley, which is fair, um, and ignored Will Anderson, or they gave Will Anderson credit for tipping the ball and said, well, Derek Stingley just, you know, he, he took advantage of the tipped ball, but watch the ball skills by Derek Stingley. Like, that's not that, that's some pretty good, that he's got damn good balls. That's what we saw after he got healthy this year. This is a classic instance where a lot of defensive backs you'd be saying afterwards, well, that's why they play defensive back and not receiver. Because that ball changes trajectory. Like, in, you know, he's got 0.2 seconds to react to that. I saw it. I saw it, Charles. I, by, by the way, real quick, I see a lot of chatter of this <laughs> about Derek Brown uh, potentially getting traded. So far, what I've seen of that is a whole lot of people creating rumors, but not any actual rumors. Carolina Panthers fans have eviscerated me, uh, which doesn't bother me, but uh, both in my DMs and publicly on Twitter, just because I've even suggested that I'd like to get, I'd like to get Derek Brown. Um, they insist that Dan Morgan is the new GM, not the old what's his face there, and that they would never do that. I don't know. I don't know. Traded away Brian Burns. All right. I remember. I was I was one of those people that thought, huh? Andre Dillard. Uh <laughs> so uh right, who's by the way is a free agent. Remember when everybody was all upset? The the Eagles. Uh, jumped up above the Texans and got Andre Dillard. He's currently a free agent. Texans could have him if they wanted. They could have their Titus and eat their Andre Dillard too. Oh, that boy, that was quick off the ball. Boom. Okay. Look at that crap. I'm saying crap instead of. Okay. We'll, we'll watch the replay. But chip block again, right? Used to be his nemesis, the chip block. So this is towards the, the, the end of the year, too, when Will had talked about just really understanding the angles better, anticipating chip blocks. Andre. <laughs> How do you say Andre? Am I wrong? Is it actually pronounced Andre Dillard? Who the hell's ever seen Andre? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so this is a, like, this is actually a good chip block, but it was actually, it was the, anticipation of it and will's so freaking damn t2 strong that it didn't matter okay he missed him because he anticipated it and he was able to sliver through and the dude like was trying to take out will anderson's would that be your liver and uh and he and he whiffed completely good job it does 
I, offensive tackles sometimes hate the chip. Like if you're, I suppose it's like probably like being a good dancer, dancing with a bad dance partner when like, it doesn't matter how good you are. If your dance partner sucks, you're not going to look good. Offensive tackles. Sometimes they get, it sucks for them if they've got a tight end or a running back that's helping them chi that's chipping, but doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Because yeah, then you're, it's almost like you're taking away the left arm of that left tackle and and not replacing it with anything else. It should be replaced with a fierce little dude who squats twice his body weight and comes up into you under your jaw. Like a chip, a well executed chip block is one of the most painful and uncomfortable things that you can have outside of a, a catheter. Once I passed out when I was getting a catheter at a medical procedure. Okay, uh, Will again, by the way. No, playing right defensive end, I think increasingly over the course of the season. Off, oh, this time he just avoids the, the chip block completely. Yeah. Okay. So Will Anderson, right defensive end. He changes, if you notice, he's changed his stance up a little to more of a, 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 a four-point sprinter stance when he's out on the edge and way out on the edge here. And this is this is such a pathetic attempt at a chip block by a tight end. This guy should be ashamed of himself. This is like this is why you can't have nice things. He didn't even touch him. And then just a quick wipe. It, like he threatened inside. This is where Will too, you know, because he does have that power and that ability to get his hands inside the, that we showed you earlier. Like just watch. He's already making his move to the outside, but the tackle is bit on the power rush. And boom. That was pretty. He just got better and better. <laughs> uh, questionable. Yeah, as far as his injury, that is when he came in and had... The Titans game was when he had like two sacks and, and four hurries on 12 plays because of his ankle. That's the, the toughness there. Will Anderson up top. Thank you. Just like JJ, he wears something on his arm so we can identify him. ET game. Good job by him and Collins. Flacco. All right. So you're going to see. Oh, that's that's Grenard. Okay, so they don't show the ET move. It's a good job by Grenard. Boy, that was smooth by Grenard. I have to send this up Minnesota's way. Eh? What was a good play by Grenard as well as Anderson? This is like, like just being a hand grenade. Just to fuck your plans. That's what I say to you, Browns. Fuck your plans. Hey, Blake. <clears throat> this is one thing that I've been telling about... I've been telling people about Jadeveon Clowney. Talked to a couple people... Uh, from Carolina this week from the Carolina media it's just like you gotta it, you gotta you gotta appreciate sometimes that Clowney and Will Anderson is the same way sometimes they're just a hand grenade to the offense like they just bust crap up like all right again we talked about the triangle he's gonna be he sees this guy collapse and he's gonna read down he's gonna see this big ass fatto fatso as a fullback takes on the fullback slash offensive lineman bounces out Man, I don't even know where he is here. There he is, left defensive end right here. <laughs> These are the good, oh, there we go, we're done. Uh, so I'm not going to read your mock draft. I'm not going to grade the 2023 Packers. I'm not going to do any of that. What I'm going to do is uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm going to get the chalk talk work in here eventually. Had some kind of a software download issue before, uh, but at least we had audio today. So, like, uh, can we appreciate that? All right. Yeah, can we appreciate the nicer things? I'm going to get a few quick questions. Uh, let's see. I assume that's a positive wow, not an ironic wow. Saved my Saturday morning drive to Corpus for Easter. Which, um, who am I thinking of? Oh, Josh Hader. That's right. Josh Hader, I had read that his wife, he met his wife when he was playing Corpus. 
And I didn't realize that. I'm sure it was in like 18 articles when they first signed Josh Hader. It just hadn't registered to me. So uh, say say hello to Josh Hader's wife's family while you're down there, please. Defense looking hella good. I agree. If it isn't everyone's favorite Boomer Texans pod class, it's... <laughs> you can go die, Shelton. I'm not a Boomer, man. I'm Gen X, all right? I'm like a young Gen X, too. Not a Boomer. I just uh, no, a boomer. A boomer would never take on the technical challenges that I have in trying to set up this podcast. Mixon is starting over Alfred Blue. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what that's in reference to. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, what's funny is on that play, Anderson and Stingley got together on the sidelines and got excited to make a disruptive play before this tip and interception. I guess I don't know if I've seen that mic'd up. I know the the other one, obviously, with the mic'd up that's interesting is, oh, the it was one before Christian Harris's interception against the Browns where D'Amico called his shot for him. D'Amico said, hey, you're about to get a pick six. And then he did. Yeah, as far as, and let me finish on this. I don't think Derek Brown, I don't, I'll be surprised if Derek Brown's getting traded. The Panthers have cap space. Um, I think that, I think they made a decision that, hey, We'll we'll pay somebody like Genevion Clowney on a reasonable short term deal. They didn't want to pay Brian Burns the money that that he could have made, but they also don't want to just they're not going to let go of every single guy that can get a huge contract. I think part of the strategy of letting Brian Burns go was knowing that you're you're going to re-sign Derek Brown at some point. Derek Brown, just to to put a cherry on the Derek Brown talk, until if it happened, it'd be awesome. You got to remember the new GM in. Carolina is Dan Morgan, who is a linebacker. And just like D'Amico, those dudes appreciate the value of having a run-stuffing slash pass-rushing defensive tackle in front of you. And I think that I, I think that that's like kind of like D'Amico's probably thinking of it, how nice it would be to play behind a Derek Brown. And it is, it's sometimes just the geometry of a wide body in front of those dudes helps the helps the linebackers. I remember Jay Foreman talking to me about that with Ted Washington. Ted Washington was extreme. And he said, like, like, just the simple geometry of dudes trying to get around Ted Washington messed up their angles, made it easier to attack those offensive linemen, all of that. And, like, Derek Brown does that more so than a Sheldon Rankins or a Malik Collins or what have you. So it'd be awesome to have him. I don't think it's in the cards. Tavondre Sweat has a lot of geometry to him. You try to, you try to pie times the diameter on that big fella. And uh, it gets interesting. Thank you, everybody. I'm Seth Payne. I played for the Texans a long time ago. Uh, this is my live stream. I'll have another couple of videos coming out this weekend. But please like, subscribe, tell a friend, uh, come back in to see if I ever get the chalk actually working again. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend.